Amen. The Bible said, well, there were two or three gathered together my name. So if two of y'all happy, I'm all right. <laughs> Look what the Bible says. If I set up heaven, there'd be no more rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send the pestilence among my people. God said, if there's a reason why I have to do that, it will be because of sin. He said, but my people, which I call by my name, the believers, shall humble themselves, humility, and pray. Seek my faith, the prayers of repentance, and turn from their wicked way. He said, then will I hear from heaven, and I will give, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. We love that part. Now, verse number 15. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attended unto the prayer that is made in this place. See, somebody got to go back to praying and seeking God. Amen. For ending of things. Too many of us are going through things that we don't pray for nobody else. We pray just for ourselves. Amen. When there ought to be a wrecking party in the house of God when you walk through the door. There ought to be somebody in here that is setting the temple so whenever the people walk in, they are walking to the anointing of God. Amen. But what we have when we come in church is a bunch of sadness people that don't have the name of God on them. Y'all ain't gonna like me much. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house. You got to understand, when you come into the house of God, you come into the presence of God. Don't just look at this as a building, but look at, I'm coming where the presence of the Almighty resides. When you walk in here, you got to learn how to respect God, whether you want to or not. I told you I'm going to hit you and run. I'm just about done with this. That my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And as for you, if you will walk before me. How come we keep trying to walk behind God and not before God? No wonder we ain't getting blessed. And as for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, and do according to all he had commanded you, and observe my statutes and my judgment, then will I establish the throne of your kingdom. According as I have covenant with David your father, saying that there shall not fail you a man to be rule, ruler in Israel. Here's number 19, is where I want to go with verse number 2. But if you turn away and forsake my stature and my commandment, which I have set before, do you not know that God has set some stuff before the church? There are things that you have been assigned to that you are not operating in. Why is it that the Holy Ghost got to continue to push us to do the things of God? When he has already commanded you to be a worker in the house of God. But if you turn away and forsake my stature and my commandments which I set before you and go serve other gods and worship them. There are some folks that are serving other gods. Your heart ain't in the right place no more. You used to love the Lord, but now we can't find you. It's hard to get you to do anything when it comes to the Lord. This is the kind of stuff that make folks sit there and say, I sure will be glad when this is over. Then will I pluck them up by the root. Don't you make God pluck you, baby. Don't you make him pull you up. And out of my land, don't you make God put you out now? Out of the land, out of the 
the land of goodness, out of the land of mercy, out of the land of happiness. Don't make God put you out. Watch this. A lot of see y'all, y'all got them looks on your face. I, I'm going to say it anyway. Then when I put them up by the roots and out of my land, which I have given them, and this house, in this house, which I have, what? Sanctified for my name. And look what God said. I will cast out of my sight and will make it a proverb and a byword among the nation. God said, I'll make folk forget who you are. They won't even remember you when you sin. You ever heard anybody that used to be in church and they start talking about what they used to do when they was here? It don't mean nothing no more. You know, they ain't even got a good conversation. No unction, no power, no fire, nothing left because you go out of God. He has brought them up and put them out. started with a lack of confidence. Your lack of confidence will make God get rid of you. Because the Bible said without faith it's impossible to please him. You ain't even making God happy because you ain't got no confidence. That's how come we have folks that sit in church they never move. No confident. You may want to check your spirit out. You may even got plucked, baby. Ain't nothing like a plucked chicken. But plucked in the house. That's why you're not sustaining. That's, not, that's why you're not growing. That's why you're not elevating. No confident. It's a destroyer in the house of God. God needs everybody to believe it. When he said, my people that are called by my name, he was speaking to the believers in the house. He wasn't talking to sinners. He was talking to church folks. I hear God say, when are you going to believe me? When are you going to accept what I say? And a lot of us, this is what we say, I'll do it next week. I'm going to get myself together when I get straight. You ain't going to never get straight. You ain't got sense enough to get straight. Amen. You need help to get straight. Amen. It is the Lord that makes the crooked straight. Amen. Not you. Some of us won't even talk to our, our loved ones. We got cousins and, and, and nieces and nephews need to be saved. But we're so selfish because we don't have any confidence. I ain't gonna say nothing about church. They don't want to hear it. How you know? Maybe on the verge of giving their life away. And all it takes is one word that would come from a believer. You probably could save somebody's life. We had this in our Bible class one time. I said, if somebody was standing on the cliff and getting ready to jump, what would you do? Some of the church folks ain't got nothing because you don't know no word. Right. All you know is John 3, 16. <laughs> <laughs> He's so loved. We know that. <laughs> he so loved the world till he, he gave it all. Do you act like you preaching when you say it? Act <laughs> like you full of God. He's so. Why'd you tell somebody about their flesh? Get right with God. 